Hey everyone, my name is Paul from Fright Candle and this is Fright Candle Behind the Scenes. In this video I'm going to show you how I quickly converted all my app icons to the right sizes. Okay, so this is Affinity Designer, it's my preferred vector-based program. And um, so I made this template to make exporting app icons way easier. So all of these are embedded documents, which means that when I double press on it, it opens in another window. And everything I change here changes automatically also in the, in the other file. It's basically how smart objects work in Photoshop. So if you see back here, uh, now the left foot is up and the right foot is down. So that's for for fun, uh, change them around. And I save this. I don't know if I actually have to save this, I just quit it. And now every one of them is changed. Okay, but now I have a bunch of images. How do I export them? Well, if I go to the export persona, you can see that all of them are actually sliced. So I made slices for all of them. And I also made the ones that are on the right side have uh, are have rounded corners because they are for Android. So um, for app icons on iOS, you cannot have any uh, transparency in it because uh, you just give them the, the plain square one and they make the rounded corners. So if they change something, uh, and the look of their uh, app icons, they can just use all of the other older ones because um, you don't actually provide the rounded corners for them. They do that themselves. It's just a mask. Um, but for Android, they you you can have any icon you want. I think they're slowly going towards a rounded corner design as well. But at the older ones, you could just do whatever you want. You could do round round icons. You can do all sorts of things. It's pretty cool. I made a mask over the embedded document for the Android one, so they have all they all have the same radius uh, for the rounded corners. So the only thing I have to do now is click export slices down here, and you can see where I uh, saved the original ones. Uh, it will save it with the name for which platform it is, and then the, um, the size of it, so it's 81 pixels or for uh, 32 pixels for everything uh, I need. So when I'm done with that, I go to Unity and I go to Project Settings, Layer, and then under Icons, I just uh, drag them in and they work. So hopefully when I build the game now, the icons will be there because they always give me a lot of errors when I try to export the game. And next I'm going to work on the random generation of the different obstacles in the obstacle run. I've been working for some time on the random generation of obstacles, but it's not really working. It's really annoying. Let's see what happens. Okay, so if we pause the game, we can see if we zoom out that every it's every 200 units a, um, a obstacle spawns. If I go to play it, you see that the inertia is sometimes gone. Also, this obstacle does work. This one, however, is not working. I can just run over the water for some reason. Okay. That's fine. Next one too. And also the right one also. So I have this strange thing that sometimes obstacles do work and sometimes they don't work. So uh, yeah, that's really annoying. And the thing is that uh, if we grab my code, it's really messy and I, I'm so close to just rewriting everything because doing a 2D game while the game is flat does not work because the 2D colliders are not working. So everything is 3D colliders in my game, which is really stupid because it's it's a 2D game. So I'm thinking about rewriting everything so it's normal phase up, how usually a, a 2D game should work. But then things with rigid bodies can do weird things. So maybe if I just let it rest and go, come back tomorrow, it will be fine, but... Okay, so the thing is that if we look at this, this part, okay. So I do this really stupid thing that I loop through this seven times because I want seven obstacles there. It's still hard coded, but that's fine for now. Um, I pick a random number f uh, out of the random obstacles. So I have a, an array of obstacles and I pick a random number. I make an object. I instantiate one of those prefabs into the object. Then I parent it to the floor because if I don't do that, it won't move with everything. But I think there is the problem because so every time I tap on the screen, it checks if it's the floor. If it's not, if it's an obstacle, for example, it won't do the calculations for the run. 
but because every object is a parent of the floor, which is the background, which is the tag I, I'm looking for while running. I think there are some weird stuff happening there. Okay, but yeah, I uh, parent it to the floor. Then I uh, loop through every child of the object and I get the first one and I parent it also to the floor. And so I unparent it from the parent because it's just an empty game object with every other thing parented to it. So when I put it in the world, in the world, when I instantiate it, I deparent it from this, from this empty game object and parent it to the floor. It's not under the, the prefab anymore. I do this because if I don't do that, then all the, it doesn't really recognize any of the tags because the parent has no tag, so it's fine. It's really weird. Uh, I figured that out, but now I have other weird stuff because sometimes it doesn't register and sometimes it does, which is really annoying. And after that, I increase the Z position by 200 because that's where I, that's the Z position where I, where I spawn the prefab. I think I'm just going to leave the video right here. I'm going to look at it more tomorrow and next week, but I need to finish the video tonight because otherwise I cannot upload it in time because I started really late in the week with filming. Yeah, next week I will get on top of things and uh, hopefully find a solution to fix this stupid stuff, what's happening now. This will be it for this week's video. If you like this video and you want to see more, uh, go look at my previous video because that was way better than this one. If you want to see more, please subscribe and also like this video and click the notification bell if you want to be notified when I upload a new video. And I will see you all next week.